In this tutorial, I show you how to add an add-on to Contact Form 7 that will take the uploaded information from someone who uploads something on your site through a Contact Form 7 form and then stores it on the server that you can then see in your WordPress dashboard. And I show you how to do that in this tutorial. We're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we are all about WordPress. And if you want to get better at WordPress, make sure you stick around and hit the bell icon or the thumbs up or both while you're at it. And with that out of the way, let's head into the screen capture. The first thing we want to do is install a plugin and it's called Contact Form 7 Submissions. So go to Plugins and Add New and type in Contact Form 7 Submissions. The only want is this third one, third one if you count this way, and then second one if you go from top to bottom. By the way, by Jason Green, 40,000 installs, untested with the current version. That's kind of uh, sketchy, but I just updated two days ago. Um, anyway, probably should get on that. But if you're concerned about that, you can back up your site files and your database before you do this with a tutorial link to up above called Updraft Plus, or you can try this on a testing environment first. I'm just gonna install it right here on my demo site by clicking Install Now, and then Activate. And the Submissions plugin added a new menu item under Contact and then Submissions. Click on there. And we're going to see not much is here yet. It is pulling something up. Not sure why, but this surprise sent a long time ago. But we're going to do something else, which is attach a file to this to make the file viewable in the dashboard. So under the contact forms, I'm going to go to all of them, my list of contact forms, and edit one of them. I only have one, so I will edit this one. At the very bottom, I'm going to add new label. Just copy that whole thing and say, please attach a file. I'm going to delete the shortcode and click on File. Then we're going to add a file shortcode. I'm going to make it required. I'm going to make the size limit one megabyte. If you don't add the MB, it's going to default to bytes, and one byte is very, very small. So you can do this in KB, but you have to add a KB after, and MB, you have to add an MB after. Acceptable file types, it's going to be a PDF. So I'm just going to set that as PDF. I'm not going to have an ID or a class in this case. Save that or insert that and then click on Save. Then I'm going to go to the Mail tab and now we have our new file shortcode here. So I'm going to copy this and put it down into the File Attachments field. Paste it in there. And then click on Save again. I'm going to copy the shortcode. I'm going to add it to a page. Go to Pages and then Add New. I control clicked or command clicked, depending on what you're using, Windows or Mac, and open that in a new tab. I'm going to add a title. I'm going to call this CF7 Files in the Dashboard. I'm going to paste in my shortcode right here. Gutenberg auto detects the shortcode and adds a shortcode module, which is pretty fancy. I'm going to click on Publish and then Publish again. Click on View Post. I Command clicked or Control clicked again to open this in a new page or a new tab. I'm going to quickly fill out this form. Change the email address to this one. Attaching a file. File attach my message. You need to attach a file. You can drag and drop or click on Choose File. I'm just going to drag and drop a file into here. And it lists the file name right here. If you want to know how to add multiple files, click on the tutorial up above. That shows you how to do multiple files in Contact Form 7. Click on Send when you're ready. We get a thank you message, and that's great. So the first thing I'm going to do is check in my email to make sure I got the file. So here's the email message attaching a file as a subject, and here's the file we attached. So that worked. It's in the email. Now let's check in the dashboard. We go to Contact and then Submissions. If I click on View here, Let's see what this one has. This one has a file attached. So here's, here's the email itself, all the content in the email. And then down below, there's a files section. And this is the file shortcode. So if you recall, when we built this form, let's just double check that. Not double check, but just show you where to find that. Click on edit for the form to get to the form builder. So the shortcode name is file-278. And that is what we have here, file-278. You can change that name. So if we add, just click on the file to add this, we can change this name to whatever we want. So this could be um, 
bio PDF. If that's what you're asking for in the form, this could be bio PDF. And then here, this would appear as bio PDF. Might make it a little more readable, especially for people who aren't building the form. So if you're building this for a client, it might make more sense to name it something more custom by doing the name field in here. No spaces allowed. That's why I have a dash in here. No special characters either for the name. So we have this file attached. Click on open file. It takes us to the uploads folder. WPF or WPCF7 submissions folder, which is a new folder this plugin created. And then it has a folder with some kind of code possibly referring to the date. Not sure what this code is, but then we have the file. So you can actually log on to your server and all the files that are uploaded over the years, days, months, or whatever, will have a location in the uploads. Well, I'm not gonna read it again, but in this directory, there's gonna be a bunch of folders with the files. So you can see them on your server. You can also see them in the emails inside this submission dashboard. And the second one that was sent, let's see what that was. So it looks like this is the email that was sent to the recipient. So simple sequence was the recipient. If we go to our form, I actually have the second email, mail to, set up. I, ch I checked this box for a previous tutorial, and it's still set up. And so that second entry is that email that's sent to the person who filled out the form. If you want to know how to do that, create that autoresponder, click on the link up above or in the description down below to that tutorial. It's pretty handy to set up that autoresponder because people, when they submit the form, they get, it's still here, this thank you message. But then it's also nice when they get an email saying, hey, I got your email, I'll get back to you when I can or whatever the email is gonna be. People almost expect that these days to get that response. Just letting them know that you got the email and everything is good to go. And that is how we add attachments to our forms and then view them inside the WordPress dashboard. And we also get them via email as we saw as well right here. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you follow along, then hit the bell icon or the thumbs up and check out our private Facebook group, linked to in the description down below. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side to so get an even better WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.